thank all of you for attending this workshop. And I know it's kind of a little bit nerve wracking with the online, but I appreciate you attending. And um, I thank the Great Art and Great Lakes for this opportunity. It's gonna be really cool. I think that eventually it'll be lifted and we'll be able to do some of this in person. Um, to start off with, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm offering this workshop from my home, but we are on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe Nation. For me, this acknowledgement, when we say this, for me, it's always to walk with an open heart and a positive being for bridging some good partnerships. So thank you everyone for attending. Um, for this project, um, a few of you that are attending were involved with the beginning of it and how it came to be. And I think lately that's really important for us to think about is how can we care for something unless we have a relationship with it? And the it could be the water, the air element, an animal, a tree. And for today, we're tying in um, the water, which is very dear to my heart and also our forestry, which is extremely important. And I have a, a very strong connection with the trees. I, I just love them. So I'm hoping that today with the group that are attending, we can chat and discuss while we're sanding some of the relationships that you have or have built with the water as um, the element. So a little bit why we chose pine um, the, it was going to be either pine or cedar for the paddles. And when speaking with Turkster Lumber, who very kindly donated the uh, wood for this project, which is pretty awesome. They said, you know, Gene, it's really uh, a nice soft wood. It's, it's easy to stain. It's easy to work with. And then I, I thought, you know, let's go with pine because pine is very healing and the little needles are used for teas with um, a, a vitamin C that's in it. It's also used with uh, the, the, the pitch, the tar pitch for, for antibacterial. And it just kind of fit well with this project. So we went with the pine. Um, there's 28 paddles that have been given out and um, Alexis, if you could put the picture of the, if you can, the uh, water wheel that the paddles that when they were all laid out so that people can see that, that picture. We're going to have the 28 paddles that uh, will join to a hub that will have a turtle painted on the hub. And it will um, represent the 13 moons that we have. Thank you for putting that up. Uh, it represents the 28 days between the full moons and the uh, top of the paddles will have the 13 and then within the 13 you'll have a symbol of the water which will be a global symbols from all over the, the world that people have choices to put it on. Um, and then when it's to be uh, displayed, it'll be just like um, we're hoping a uh, Ferris wheel. So the wind will catch it and it'll turn slightly. So this uh, wheel will be two sided with uh, the uh, symbols. Um, so on to the pine again. Um, so um, in, I wanted to share this is, with a, a forest um, kind of comparable, a natural forest setting and giving um, a comparable to is similar to our community where um, the exterior of a forest is extremely flexible. And when the wind blows, the shrubs and the, the little red willow and the scrub brush are extremely flexible. And it breaks the wind to a degree for the next layer, which is our cedars and our pines. And the wind again is broken down to when it gets into the center, 
where it comes to our maples and our oaks, where they're very rigid and strong and they filter the, the wind back up and out of the forest. So it's really saying that everybody has a place in the forest, just like the com a community does. Everybody fits and should be welcomed in the forest. So with our trees, uh, without water, the trees don't exist. And the rainfall is extremely important for the survival of our trees, which in turn provide a home for our insects and our wildlife. The trees cannot pick up or move when the climate changes and it offers a drought or a flood that puts a threat to their lives. Along the Grand River and our canal bank, we have a beautiful natural forest setting that supports an enormous amount of wildlife. When waterways are altered for the benefit of humans, it in turn may create flooding within the forest, setting and displacing our natural wildlife. Locally here, we have a set of beautiful bald eagles that have nested on the Grand River for over 30 years, close to the mouth. And currently we have um, a waterway that was altered and now it's flooding the whole area of the, the forest that is free up to the marsh setting. And when you see this flooding that was man-made, you see that the trees are uprooted. And I think there's a picture there as well, Alexis. And it, you wouldn't think that that would be something that would hurt the, the trees, but this flooding isn't a natural flooding, it's been altered. So now we have trees that are coming up and being uprooted where in turn now it's very hard for the deer that are inhabiting that area, trying to walk through it and struggling. And then in turn, the other little creatures that would nest are displaced. So it's, it's from one, one small ripple that has affected a mass area. So today I'm hoping while we're sanding that we can share and discuss what relationship we have and what you do with the water. And it's, you know, it's really cool because our area, we have Lake Erie and we have the Grand River at its largest point. And you know, to recognize this relationship, this is where our passion and our caring can, can develop and really ripple you know, to others. So, have with your little package you have a shell and you have a little blue bead and so I chose the, the lighter <coughs> excuse me colored blue bead to represent <coughs> excuse me the water so and you have your shell that came from the water and that's where it started its life in the water in the ocean so for me I wanted to get to that and that you will remember that this one hour that we had together as a group within the community. So <clears throat> now you have also two types of sandpaper. You have a hundred grit and you have a hundred and fifty. So if you'd like to start with the coarser of the two, which is the 100, and this is totally up to you because th these paddles were uh, first made by our local high school, which the kids were absolutely amazing. There was um, 30 kids in the classroom and it was spearheaded by uh, Phil Klein and the school was very supportive. The paddles were cut out and the hope was to have the paddle with a, a rounded end, like a beaver tail, um, but the kids, before they took their break at March break, they were not done completely the paddles. And um, it was really difficult to try to get the paddles out of the high school because it was in lockdown. So we were very fortunate that we do have them. So when you're sanding, um, the, the most important part is the base because this is going to be the part where the next group will will paint on it. So we really would like to have it as soft and smooth as possible. And your handle, you'll notice, will most likely have some nicks out of it and some wobbly to it. It's up to you if you want to put that extra into it. You'll have these paddles for close to probably another week 
So if you'd like to take that time and sand it, then that would be great too. And same with the, the side here. No, Gina, so we're not gonna be the same people that paint them? You, you'll have that choice. That's if you'd oh. like to register for it, you're more than welcome. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. in the background here he asks we're going to paint it so that this part of the paddle will be divided into 13 sections like the back of a turtle and each section will have a, a symbol of the water that you'll be have, make a choice and put on so if you wanted to start um with the 100 grit and sand to what makes you feel comfortable and shelly's in the back here too she's sanding and really if you the scent of the pine is so like for me i find it very peaceful i find it it just smells so good doesn't it i know it's great eh so um and i'd like to if we can all of us chat about the relationship that you do have with the water um and if you could share that and maybe we'll spark some good conversation about it and learn from each other because this project is not just about quote Gina McKinty doing this. This is about all of us. And the end project is the water wheel. And it's the journey along the way that we've put into this project that will hold the memories to, not just to see it on display. So David just asked if um, I'd like to have the, the ends rounded. That's totally up to you guys. This is not, you know, I want you to feel comfortable and this is your energy that you've put into this paddle. And whoever the young person was that created the paddle, their energy's in it. So it's, it's the ripple effect again. The more people and the more time that you, we can put into these paddles with, with positive energy, I, I personally think that would be awesome. Okay, also Gina, how do we know what is the base and what is not the base? Okay, so this is right here, the, the base, which is... Yeah, I mean on our on our paddle because both of them look the same to me. Yeah, both, both sides. Oh, both sides. Both, both sides of the paddle. Okay. All right. Yeah, both sides of the paddle. If you could stand it, that would be great. I love how you said ripple effect. Ripple is such a fitting word for it, for what we're doing. Would you like me to talk about, start with my, my connection to the water, Gina? It's Sue. Yes, I'd love to hear. So I was born in Hamilton, so of course grew up on the shores of Lake Ontario. And uh, our, in the summertime, um, I mean, I'm one of nine children. So uh, our, Chris, our holidays were always uh, just to take Sunday, Saturday or Sunday trips to Lake Erie that, or a conservation area, but it was always to the water. My dad um, loved, grew up on the water himself and made kayaks. He, he, he built kayaks, wooden and canvas kayaks. So we were always on the water. And then um, when I went to London, there's no water and you feel, I've always felt very disjointed in London. I can't figure out south or north unless I know where the water is, okay? So Lake Erie is south, Lake Ontario is north. So then I was in Sault Ste. Marie for 25 years. And of course, I think the Superior Lake is the best of them all. But it's very, it would, be, would have been hard to come back to not being on the water. I find the water very, um, very calming, very centering. Um, I lived for a year on Lakeshore Road. Um, it was one of the most peaceful years I ever remember. Just watching the water every every day, it has a t it has a different um, a different uh, mood every day. Just like people, um, you know, some days it's rough, some days it's wild, some days it's calm. Um, so you know, it's just I think it's a living thing. Uh, the water is a living thing for me. So, anyway, so that's where I came from. From water, I've, it's always been a part of who I am. And you're back here on the water. Yeah. Yes. Gina. Yes. Hi. Um. 
my relationship with the water started, um, I was actually born in a hospital that backs onto the Grand River uh, in Cambridge, Ontario. And um, this, for the first nine years of my, or eight and a half years of my life, I lived on the Grand River. Our backyard went to the Grand River. And then we moved to British Columbia and I lived on the Pacific Ocean. And then we moved back to Ontario um, and had some turbulent years in between where I didn't live on the water. And then um, dial it forward to 15 years ago and I was uh, part of the Grand River Conservation Foundation, uh, which is um, the fundraising branch of the Grand River Conservation Authority. And through that, I met my now husband. And so we always credit the Grand River with being the basis of our love story. And um, we now live, have moved and live on Lake Erie. So water has always been very prevalent in my life. Um, and from my birth uh, to my marriage, um, one of my sons got married on the banks of the Grand River. Uh, it's, it's been a very big part of our lives. Um, so the thread of the river is in the thread of the tapestry of, of our lives. Um, and I always feel the same as Sue. It, um, brings, it has a centering quality and brings that, that peace um, and tranquility that I, I just don't find in another way. I always find it on the banks of, of a water body. So I'm really, really pleased and honored to be part of this project, Gina, and uh, thank you very much for including us. And I have to apologize on Peter's behalf. He got a call, and so he can't participate in this particular workshop today. So I'm doing his standing. I think he just wanted me to do his work. <laughs> well, thank you for thank coming, you. Anita. No problem. I'm really enjoying it. Thank you. Um, this is Anya. Like Sue, I grew up in Hamilton. Uh, I was always like a really downtown urban girl. We moved a lot, but it was always like pretty much always downtown core. And then I went to school in Toronto. So I was there for 30 years. And I've been a late bloomer in pretty much everything in my life. And it took me until I was like 40 to start to camp and canoe. And it became, it became my refuge, really, like the, the one thing that could make me feel at peace. And, um, and, uh, but I was always looking to keep moving, keep moving somewhere else and looking for the, the place that would feel like home. I had never found it decade after decade. And then um, I was living in downtown Hamilton a few years ago. And I asked myself, what will make me stop obsessively um, searching the, the MLS realtor listings? Like what, what is home for me? And I said, I need to live by a river. And I just, um, I just went on the MLS and I, I zoomed sort of look for water view, <laughs> you know, made, made the circle bigger. And I just started to look at everything I could near a river. And um, I had been around Dunville for more than a dozen years because we have a, a cottage in Port Maitland. But um, when I found this, when I saw this, this house in Dunville that it, does have a river view and is basically almost just across from, from the park. I, I saw the picture and I felt like that's home. Wow, that's home. I, and I, I, so I moved here a few years ago and I walk the riverbank with my dog every day. And, um, you know, I walk close enough that I can hear the water lapping. And when I hear the water, I feel almost like a tingle, a sparkle move through my body. And it's like the energy just flows through it's almost like silver stars or something like just this this beautiful frizz of energy going through me and I feel like I, I can breathe and I feel alive again and um, I never I never want to be further away from wherever than I can carry my canoe into <laughs> ever again that sounds beautiful I feel so grateful really really grateful Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thanks for letting me be part of this. Here are the people standing. Hi, Hi Gina. Hi. <laughs> it's Christine. How are you? Good. Thanks for inviting me to this. Um, who's, just, who's just me? 
Does she want to identify herself? Oh, does it not say? It's... It doesn't say who it is. Oh, okay, it's Christine Boyko Head. Oh, okay. You know what? I didn't have. I didn't push the right button. I pushed it now. Oh, okay. Um, so, as Gina knows, because we go back to high school, I have always lived on the banks of the Grand River, and as every probably well, I won't say every. As many teenagers, you probably think you're not going to stay in your hometown. You're going to go beyond and see the big wide world. But uh, 55 years later, I'm still here in Dunville, have traveled the world, but it's always so nice to come back here. And I've been surrounded by water then all my life, uh, born and raised in Dunville on the banks of the Grand River. Also, I have a cottage on Lake Erie. And as a, as a writer, I just find, strength, I find my creativity, I find my imagination just nurtured by the water and especially I think the the lake um, in the winter because I think a lot of people you know they enjoy the summer, they come to the beaches and it's those people that are the the homegrown like the last speaker that said she has a place on on uh, the lake in Port Maitland. Um, when, you're, when you have a cottage, when you have a place on the water and you see it in all seasons, you see it in all its, its beauty. Um, even the storms, I find the storms especially beautiful. And it, mm. it changes so much, like the water changes just the way we change as we experience different things and we come across new people and new events in our lives. And the water reflects that, or we reflect the water. And the ability to be agile and flexible, especially in a time like now as well. But I think the, the water is really something special that for me anyways, it, it took a while to appreciate because maybe as a teenager, I always thought there was something else and something better elsewhere, but there's nothing better than sitting on the banks of the river and standing this paddle, even though my hand is cramping. <laughs> so. Christina, I'm a writer too. This is Anya, and uh, I agree with you that it really, it really nurtures creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, you go through the, the different emotions, just like the water seems to reflect that in its colors and in its movement and, and everything around it, you know. Um, so. I like how you said, Christine, about um, the storms and the lake during winter, right? A total mm. different realm, totally. Yeah, what I find, I think, so amazing is that, especially if you have the privilege of being there over a long period of time, day after day, it changes every day. You know, it's, it's not just, oh, there's snow or ice on the lake every day it's a different color to that ice it's you know a sandbank has shifted because of the wind and uh you know the snow banks have shifted because of the wind coming off the lake and it's just a constant a constant change just as i think people have to change and be flexible with what they encounter you know so i think we can learn a lot from from the way the water behaves and what it does to to the environment around it but that relationship that that we're listening to that that we all you know so far who's spoken you know it it gives that passion that that if something's wrong with the water would we not want to help right and mm -hmm. do something just like participating with this workshop every you know people jump on board it's affiliated to water so there is that that admiration for it and the 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 love sent to it you know, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm. And it's a, it's healing, like the water, to be near the water, to experience the water, to hear and smell and, and feel the, you know, the ions or whatever. It's so healing and, and really should be reciprocal. Yeah. You know? Be so in, the, in my paddle, there's, uh, it's Suya, 
um, there's just little tiny, little tiny like little gouges. Is it okay to leave those in there or should we sand those out? <clears throat> Do you have, is it on the, the front like here, Sue? Oh, yeah. Um, well, don't like it. I don't want it to frustrate you. So if you think that that, you know, a little no, bit. I like, I like the gouges. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like life. Life yeah. gives you gouges. <clears throat> it can give you gout too, but gouges. There's your gouges <laughs> in your life. It's very lifelike. Yeah. Well, then you do what makes you feel good with that piece. That's okay. your reflection and, and time into it, right? Okay. Well, the turtle's back wouldn't be all smooth either. But you can appreciate the kids, you know, they... Oh, uh, no, yeah, absolutely. Well, well, like I'm saying that, it's, that it was so fast to have gotten done and then, you know, how this project's kind of led, you know, we, we thought when the beginning was to start with Dunville and take the path of resistance to go to Cuga High School and then to Hagersville and then Caledonia. And then the path of huge resistance was when it went all completely shut down. So I think to myself how lucky we were to have those paddles even be created and cut out by that time span, you know? because it would have been a, a different project altogether, you know, to, to get people to cut out the paddles if we wanted to have everyone participate, you know, that would have been trying. We got quite a bit on there, Shelley. We have to we have to think of this as one of the storms that comes up on Lake Erie. Uh, if you've ever been uh, this past winter or past yeah, the past winter was a wild one on Lake Erie, and uh, eroded you know so much. But uh, the year that I was on the uh, there was a big snowstorm. I got snowed in, uh, which was kind of funny. But uh, but you, you know that's that's just this is this is our this is your weather storm. This is your storm, Gina. Uh, Mother Nature provided a storm for you to get past. Having this uh, difficulty with, or not difficulty, but challenges of navigating, eh? During a, during a, a, a pandemic, quite a bit different. But you know that we're all learning about ourselves with the quiet, and I think that part is awesome. But it's been the, the, the neat part of making a, re a relationship with Alexis and Christopher, and then each and every one that's already started to leap onto the workshops, that is, is here we go again with the ripple effect, taking it to the next level. It's just a little challenge that we're all meeting, you know? Gina, do you not think that, that water is just like life? It's always changing. Um, sometimes it's calm, sometimes it's rough, sometimes it's really rocky and wavy and dangerous. And I think it really reflects how, how our lives are. But I think there's a reassurance in that, that when you look at the water and you can see how rough and horrible and stormy it is one day, um, it will come back to being a calm and beautiful, beautiful thing. It's like they say, this too shall pass. So if you look at the water as, as a guide to life, it's, it's uh, a real um, parallel to how, how our lives are. I agree. Well, I was going to try it. I don't know. Come on, if you can. Come on up, I'll move a little bit. Yeah. I'm just gonna move Shelly's here in the back. You can, and I'll, you can, and yeah, you, well, no, you can't really, but you can share your. Hi, everyone. I uh, just really wanna thank Gina, because this is a really a special experience. Um, and for me, um, the water has always been I can 
So I grew up on the shores of Lake Erie, um, just as a toddler, and um, spent my childhood um, up until uh, my early teens living on the shores of Lake Erie. So, you know, every day in a bathing suit, basically, you know, on the shores, in the water. Um, so I am a true water baby. I loved it. I still love it. Um, yeah, and when I was 13, I wrote a speech on swimming across the lake because I was always in the water. I used to give my mother um, almost like a heart attack because I'd swim out so far and she couldn't swim a stroke. And uh, until I uh, figured out that there were eels down there and then I figured, okay, I'm not going to swim across the lake. Um, um, so then um, I, when I moved away from the lake, our whole family, it was, um, can't take the lake out of, once you live by the water, you cannot, it's in you forever. Um, there's a strong connection to it. Um, and uh, so now I live a block and a half away from the Grand River. And whenever I even go downtown or ride my bike, or I always take the route that goes along the river to be close to the water, because um, it's very powerful for me. And um, I bought a kayak. I started out as a kayak guide with the very first kayak company that came to Dunville. So that was a lot of years ago, probably the early 90s. And um, yeah, basically spent a lot of time on the waters kayaking. I've kayaked many parts of the Grand River and um, just love it. There's always more to explore. Whenever I travel, I, I always, you know, check out the kayaking companies wherever I am. Aruba, Vancouver. Um, I mean, travel is going to be limited now, so I'm kind of sad about that. But um, yes, yeah, so the water, yeah, it's a uh, very powerful force for me and very sacred and uh, yeah I appreciate doing this project with Gina. So is, is everybody now kind of working with the, the 150? Grid, sandpaper. It's still comfortable with when you think you've kind of roughed it off that you can use the uh, 150. Oh, then we, yeah, you started with 100, then you got 150. Gina? Yes? Were you saying earlier that you ideally had been thinking to plane this thinner at the end? Is that what you were saying? I, can you say that again? It kind of cut out. Were you saying uh, earlier that ideally you would want it to thin out the, the blade, the end of the blade? Well, no, like, you you see how yours is kind of, um, well, Shelly Square. says it's squared off. I was thinking you see how it's a little bit round here oh, on corner. this one. If you, yeah. But yeah. But you don't you don't have to. It's whatever kind of yeah, like David said, you okay. need a jigsaw. You can just round it so it's not sharp. Yeah. Okay, good. I just wasn't sure if you were talking about the just the corners or the whole ed, end of the blade. So that's good. Thanks. What makes you happy? Dart. Linda? Linda Jonglin. Hi, it's not jongling anymore. Zahara? Yeah. Hi, hon. Okay, well, are you going to share something about the water? I do because um, it, it is in connection to what lives on the water and needs the water for, for their life and that is I wasn't raised in water. I was raised, actually, I'm a city chick. But once I found Dunville 30 years ago, I consider myself a Dunvillian and found things that, I don't know, I suppose my little piece of heaven here on earth is where I'm sitting now and fell in love with 
the bald eagle and um and literally you know was invited to their home and and you as well was was you know a, a part of that and i think over the years we've seen um an intrusive change and we've got a lot of um awesome real estate around here for eagle and um i don't know i i value the water not to be in it because um uh, because I really, I almost drowned. So I'm not a good swimmer, but I love being around it because I believe the water is at the same vibration of spirit. And sometimes we just have to get by the water to, to be cleansed and to, to think and to, I guess, just be closer to spirit. So that is what the water is for me, is a connection to everything else that, that needs it to live on and to thrive on and it's part of their home they're part of our community so it's up to us to like you are doing yourself by just keeping an eye on things that things aren't you know done on the QT because nobody cares because there is there's a lot of people that care and I want to you know thank you for your invitation and um kind of back in the ball game with you and cheers hon here's here's to love and, and light Thank you. Thank you, I can hear all the little sanding, sanding. Is there any, um, Jillian? Hi, Gina. Hi. 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 I could hear a set, your kids. Not my kids. It's mine. Oh, nice. It's Michaela and Jade. Oh, nice. Michaela stole my paddle. She's sanding it. <laughs> Good. Okay. Can you say it again? It's Jillian. Okay. Hi. Um, I have always had the access to water um, due to like, spending summers at a campground. And some of my best memories with my family growing up was like learning how to fish and boating and swimming and really just enjoying the water in that way. And it's just something that's been really special for me to pass along to my boys. Um, so that's been great. I didn't grow up on water in my home. Uh, like where I actually lived wasn't on the lake, but we did go every summer to the lake. Um, and now I'm here in Dunville, and uh, like a lot of the people that have already spoken have said, I find the water to be quite soothing. Um, when my mind is full, I'll go down to the water and I'll just sit and watch it and, and contemplate the things that I need to work my way through. Um, I really do feel too like the smell of the river is something that I associate with home. So. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for having me be a part of this, Gina. Thank you for being a part of it, Jillian. That's true. In in another month, when we can, the weather heats up and we can smell the river. So it's comforting. Oh. <laughs> I'd just like to add to that. Um, there's a, a workshop next week with the great oh, and there's one the following week so if you haven't uh, seen it check it out and register it there are quite a lot of very amazing projects where is that Gina where can you find that oh so if you go back to the great art great lakes okay uh, on Facebook or on Instagram, you can look through the different 
If you um, take a look in the chat section, I actually just put the uh, website address there for anybody interested. Did Jack and Oliver get, uh, are they on? I think they are. I want to go to the guy. Oh, that guy. Hmm, I can just see some more people now. Yeah. Going to share a little bit about the river? Ah, uh, yeah, I thought maybe I would try after listening to a few people. Oh, no, is that me? No, it's not. Anyway, <clears throat> listening to some and interesting where people are from and how they came, became attracted to our river. Um, like an, a number of other people, I've spent my life uh, attached to the Grand River. Um, I'll say well over 50 years. I'm not going to qualify any more than that. Um, and interesting to think about how my life has transformed with the river. You know, it goes along, it's provided for recreation, for fun, um, just for calm and peace. And then sometimes like a bad child, you go away from it for a while, but you always come back. And there's always something special uh, about being home, about being along the Grand River. And whenever I've traveled the world and I come back home and I still say, there is still, no matter where you go in the world, I feel that there is no place like sitting on the shores of our river and watching the sunset. And I have been to the beginnings of the Grand River and fortunate enough to live at the end. And it's an incredible journey that it takes. And I think someone made the analogy of it being like life. You know, smooth water, rough water, pretty really turbulent water, and it smooths all out again. And um, yeah, much like our lives. I think now um, what I find most about the Grand River is it connects me, um, it grounds me, um, you know, I'm not out boating in it anymore and I'm not swimming as much as I used to, but if I need to feel grounded or increase my grounding, that's where I need to go. And I know that I, I know I need to sit along the river or sit along the shores of Lake Erie. And, uh, I just feel part of everything. And that's part of being at home. And, uh, I could probably go on forever, but I think I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Nice. So I can see it's closing in on the timing. Does anybody else want to share a relationship with the water? Yeah, I do. Sonia. Sonia. Hi, everybody. Hi, Sonia. <laughs> and Michaela, apparently. Hi, Michaela. <laughs> um, so for me, um, I think it's really important for me because of my kids. Like I have um, Michaela and an eight-year-old and baby Jade. Just kind of have them up the water and what it does for us. I know for myself, if I'm feeling um, overwhelmed or, um, you know, the world's just getting to be too much, I'll go outside and, you know, feel the grass in my in my toes and, I know, especially for Michaela, because she's very sensitive like I am. Um, if she's having a rough day, we'll kind of just go for a walk down by the water. Uh, I know Roxanne's taken her down there before, and I noticed that it does make a, a big difference in her and myself. And um, so just kind of uh, passing this on to the next generation, I think it's really important. And having my kids understand what the water is and what it does and how important it is and um, how important it is to me and, and it will be to them. So I think this project is really cool and I'm 
glad that my kiddos could help out too with it. So thanks for inviting us, Gina. No, thank you. Gina, it's Christine again. There's just one thing I'd like to add, and I don't know this from personal experience because I've always lived here, but I wonder for those people that have moved away from the water and maybe come back or moved away, moved away and stayed away, whether they don't carry the water, the, the river, the Grand River, the lake with them in, in spirit, and they always have that memory of what it did for them at whatever age they were here. And as I said, I can't speak to that because I've always lived here, but I wonder if there's anyone there that has moved away and found just the memory or sensations of the water as something that they drew on when they were away from, from this area. Um, Gina, um, Anita here. I, um, for a time, Peter and I lived in Australia, and part of that was due to the International River Foundation. Um, he was the uh, chair of Grand River Conservation Authority in Conservation Ontario, and as a result of that, became involved with the International River Foundation. And I don't know if you all know, but our Grand River was the second recipient of the International River Prize for the best managed watershed in the world. And um, as a result of that, um, Peter uh, and a couple of other people started a foundation, the International River Foundation, to continue that award um, as long as possible. And as a result of that, he was um, asked in 2010 to be the interim um, CEO of that organization. And we did some restructuring, but as a, also as a result of that, we have traveled all over the world to different watersheds. But I would have to say, Christine, absolutely. That's always been, the Grand River has always been the heart of all of those projects. And that's always been the foundation of how we've conducted ourselves and how we have shared um, water management practices and, and our love for the water with other people around the world. And um, it's, uh, it's, it really is literally our life's blood. Like you think about scientifically how, how much of our bodies are made up of water. So it makes perfect sense that that would be a calming influence and that would be, um, that we would be so connected to it. And I always, I always find it really hard to believe that people aren't connected to it. Um, I think if people just open themselves to allowing that connection, especially during this really turbulent time, it could be really calming and, and kind of help you get your breath back while we navigate these very rough and uncertain waters. But yeah, you do carry it with you, absolutely, Christine. It, it's uh, from the time I was a little girl when I moved to the BC and was on the Pacific Ocean, I still miss my river. And it's a funny thing, it's, a, it's like a person for me. It's, it's such a part of me, it's like part of my family. Yeah. Gina, yeah. Um, what, is, what is the marble in the shell for? Somebody's asking me. Because, well, I love shells and that shell has started out in the water. Okay. And, and it's just, it's a forever, right? It's that shell will never, pardon? Oh, and the, I'm not finished with the shell part. Just a minute. So the little shell will be forever. Yeah. And that little shell, I don't even know how old it would be. And the little bead. Um, it's just, it reminded me of that color is of the water. So I just I thought, okay, we'll put the two together and you could put the little marble in the shell and that's a memory Great. of today. That's fabulous. Thank you. I know that if Jackie can hear Jackie Labonte, there was, she had just chatted about the, the darker blue bead marble is used for another project that's somewhere. I don't, Jackie, is she here? Do you know, Alexis? Jackie, I don't see. Yeah, I don't think I see anything, Jackie. Gina, is there anything else you wanted to, um, to add to wrap things up? 
just want, I'd like to thank everyone again for participating and, and sharing and, and this has been an awesome hour. I truly appreciated it. And the, the, the folks here in the backyard too that have worked hard, it's been really good and I appreciate it for the next steps. Yeah, and I just wanted to thank you, Gina, and all the participants for leading this beautiful experience and all of your stories. It was really a great chance to connect in these times and really appreciate everyone choosing to sign in today. So thank you so much. Gina, uh, can I just have one last question? Um, we, you, so this, you just want us to have the paddle as smooth as glass or as smooth as whatever? And for the for next week, so how do you think you would like to do it? Yes, and okay. then I'll I'll contact uh, everybody email, and I'll come around and either pick them up or if you'd like to be a part of the second workshop and hold on to the the next phase. Okay. Okay. But there's and, not there's not going to be a test. Somebody's got the music on. There's not going to be a test about uh, who's got the smoothest paddle, eh? No, no. <laughs> I'm joking you. <laughs> <laughs> but so the, so the next workshop with Gina should be sometime in June. And, you know, depending on what happens, hopefully um, we can maybe have small groups meeting, but if not, we'll definitely be setting up something like this because I think this actually went really well and smooth and, and nice today. So, and I thank you all for, for contributing to the smoothness. And I'll also let everyone know next Wednesday, May 20th at 4.30, as part of um, kind of Gina's project, we have the all Nations of the Grand River Water Walkers giving a presentation, Ooh. actually with um, Linda Hendrickson, who is one of our attendees today. So thank you. So that'll be a really great workshop and or presentation talk. Um, it'll work a little differently from this, but there's more details that you can find out if you follow the link that Chris sent previously in the chat, um, greatnessglp.com slash gaggle. So you can find all the information there. It'll be up on the website, I believe, tomorrow, but we'll also be making announcements on our Facebook and Instagram. So that's a really great, that'll be a, a can't miss workshop. And uh, Gina will keep you all updated on her next one in June. And I would also really appreciate if anyone, if they have a minute, if you could fill out a little exit survey that we put together, which I just put the link into the chat right now. So, um, it's just a couple quick questions about your experience and it really helps us to kind of work on future workshops and helps us report back to Waterlution and all of that stuff. So we'd really appreciate it if you could take a couple of minutes to do that. And uh, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Ciao, Bella. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks.